What's up, everybody? We are going to give you a tour of our little mock up home gym setup that we made. So, we got just a uh, force mat in here, stall mat. Um, this is a this is the, the prime trap bar, but not the one that you can actually buy. The one you can buy is much nicer. This is the early uh, prototype, which is why it's you know, here in the garage right now. Um, so with that, you can pretty much do almost everything that you want. You can do squats, you can do deadlifts, you can do RDLs. Um, even playing around with the ideas of trying to do some pressing with it. What I've done for a cable system is we've set up a high and a low pulley. Uh, well, I guess what, like some important things for you guys are going to set this up. So I have a clip in here that you guys can see where it's basically got two lag nuts over a swiveling thing. This is going to be better than an eye bolt, both from a strength perspective and from a movement perspective. The other thing I have in here is a triangle uh, carabiner. So what the triangle carabiner is going to do is it's going to allow my bands to sit flush because if they're, for instance, if they were in a regular one like this, it's not so bad with this band, but they tend to bunch up. And what that does is it puts more stress on one part of the band. So you're more likely to tear your band. So you see down here, we have this thicker band. It still fits nice and flush and that's going to allow you to get good bands in and get good consistent resistance without tearing up your bands. Um, the other thing is, is like your eye hooks may have like 160, maybe 100, maybe up to 200 pounds of like breaking force. Now keep in mind that breaking force is in line of the hook for the most part. Like this is gonna give me, because there's no open piece in here, this is gonna give me a lot more strength. So this is rated at 400 pounds, which means that I can probably get by with several hundred pounds pulling off at an angle with that. Cause it's two bolts, a different setup, and it distributes the force better than a, like a typical eye bolt. Um, the other thing we did is I have a beam up here. So again, this is the same type of system I have in the wall, just a more robust one. Um, I figured if we're going to be doing pull-ups and like suspension based work, that I would go with something a little bit stronger. And so this one, I mean, th this one's good for several thousand pounds. Um, and we just have the, uh, the prime fitness four in one bar on here, which allows us to, uh, adjust rotation for pull-ups. On something free like this, I do like the uh, I do like the foreign one. It's a little bit more stable than having like the uh, the short bar, or the long bar up there. So that having that fixed makes up for the fact that it's kind of like this. So you just, it's fairly evil, easy to stabilize. All right. Another thing you're going to do is rotate maybe a tiny bit. Other stuff we have in here, obviously, just some weights, uh, some steps or step ups. We have a ton of bands. Uh, if you guys come over here, you kind of see what we're doing. We're kind of using you know, fat grips and the cast handles to attach to our bands for handles. If I had more cast handles, I would use these um, because this just makes it, allows me to adjust it here versus here. If I have to adjust this, I can create like different tension on one side of the other. So if you have cast handles, this is definitely a better option. If you don't, there's never been a time to grab yourself a set of cast or a set of rotate handles. So essentially what we did with this, so if you can see up here, what I've done is I've attached a prime long bar uh, up here. And what this does is it allows me then to make width adjustments to whatever I would want to use. So we have a TRX in here. If you have a TRX, by all means, or any suspension thing, rings or whatever, use them. But it only took like a couple reps for us to figure out, man, if this was not so like, you know, pulling in line for a lot of exercises, that would feel better. So the ability to move this apart, right, allows it so that I can have rowing movements that are going to be out here and not kind of like pulling me in. Same thing for flies, push-ups, we did push-ups yesterday. Significantly better being able to make it wider and narrower depending on the exercise that we want. Um, and then we have the, the rotate handle here. So you can attach this up to bands. This is a daisy chain. You can buy these on Amazon. Um, they're not very expensive. I think it's maybe like 20 bucks for a set of two. They tend to have good capacity. If you want to do like full suspension exercises, uh, for a very few of them, like for some of the squat motions and stuff, you may want just a little bit more length than a daisy chain. So you can either get an extra, uh, like an extra soft loop, which is just basically two loops. And um, you can get them in like anything from like 12 inches to two feet. Or good old fashioned chain works for a lot of this stuff too. So if I wanted to, I could use any section of the chain in between any of these things with just a couple carabiners and increase that length. Um, you can 
two of these together for pull apart or set them narrower. Like we did triceps with this thing today. I'll show that video later. But basically like being able to adjust the height here is just as good as being able to do a, a pulley system here. And to be honest, this is easier because if I have two of these, they tend to be pretty consistent. So as long as I set them in the right spot, I don't have to worry about evening out the handles or whatever. So this just gives me a lot of versatility there. If I wanted to, um, I don't know how much I want to test the strength of this thing because I didn't install it. It was here when I got moved in. Um, but I could, you know, I could use this for pull-ups too. So if you were able to anchor this in a way that was secure enough, you could use that for pull-ups, etc. too. We've done inverted rows, so obviously it's pretty close. Um, other stuff we have up here, like we have these short bands. Uh, these are gonna be good, especially if you have chain or something where you wanna have a lot of tension over a short distance. Because with a long band like this guy, right? So to get this tough, I have to like bring it like way out here and then it starts getting mini that I'm gonna have to stretch it a lot or I'm gonna have to find a way to like choke up on this or something like that to really get tension. So the nice thing about having some of the shorter bands is that I get tension right away and it comes on faster because equivocally this band stretched a couple inches is greater tension than this band stretched a couple inches because this gets to disperse the stretch across more band. So these smaller bands have a higher tensile strength. So don't think that just because these are the exact same band that doing this for a couple inches is gonna be the same as doing this a couple inches. It's not close. So uh, if you guys still need bands, uh, this company is called Rubber Bandits. Last time I checked, they had a couple left on Amazon. Uh, I do believe that Prime may actually have some of these in stock in their warehouse. Um, if they don't, then I suck apologize in advance but uh, I think they do so you can give them a call and see what they have because I got these through Prime um, so you can check out and see what they have in inventory if Amazon uh, is cleaned out because pretty much one of the hardest things to get is actually good quality bands right now and don't get like the two bands are they tear easier they don't have as much resistance um, you know and the ones that have like that coil like that look like a cover over the top I mean, that's cool because it kind of protects the brands from rubbing on stuff, but usually you can't get those in like any good strength. And you're limited on what you can do with those because the co the ones with, that are coated, like you pretty much have to use the whole length of the band for everything that you do. Uh, here's the uh, the TRX, but any suspension trainer will pretty much, I mean, it's, I mean, not to take away from their innovation or whatever, but the generics are pretty good. A set of rings, if you can't find that, if you just Google suspension training or, you know, Olympic rings or whatever, all you basically need is handles that you can adjust. Worst case scenario, you can actually just use chain and a carabiner to make your own uh, sus suspension trainer if you wanted. Or, like I said, my example would be, like, rather than using a TRX or suspension trainer, would be to use daisy chain and rotates or cast handles to be able to do your exercises. Cause then, you know, for the price of what you pay for a suspension trainer, 20 bucks of these and some good handles that are gonna last you for the rest of your life. And both of these things you can use for a ton more exercises than you can a TRX or suspension trainer. So when this is all over, you'll be able to take this stuff to the gym and use it. Uh, you won't just like sit in the bottom of your closet or the trunk of your car or something like that. Um, I mean, basically everything else we have is just free weights or, you know, so nothing that wouldn't be at the gym, just we have some adjustable dumbbell thingies. Uh, Joey's uh, nemesis here, the 100 pound uh, slam ball. You know, that can be used for a lot of things. We use it for leg extensions. It can be used for metabolic work, lots of different stuff. What I'm gonna try actually is, so I have a military uh, backpack here. I was not in the military, I just bought this surplus, but this backpack, you can find these um, usually fairly cheap, but it's got a, like a, a hard cage in it. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna look at putting that medicine ball and some weights in that backpack because it'll hold a lot more load and then maybe do some sissy squats or some uh, mock up a pendulum squat, I think is what I'm gonna try and do with the suspension trainer. So you guys can have that to look forward to this week. Um, but anyway, that's uh, that's what we're doing. And so far we've gotten two workouts in that I would say are you know almost as good as anything we could do at the gym. It just required a little bit of creativity. So if you guys have questions on what to get, how yours is set up or any ideas. So, I mean, my thought process was I wanted to be able to do something like for chests and biceps and triceps. I wanted something that would assemble a wide cable jump hook. So I knew if I had that, I could challenge a lot of things really well with bands because I could challenge things in these short positions. 
And that's why I opted to do a system like this. So if you have any like any setup where you can get like a, at least a high and a low band setup, you can do a ton of exercises because I can do flies and then presses and all sorts of different things because it's adjusting my body position, especially if I have um, good bands. And this is not a very big garage. When I park my car in here, it beeps like in 360 degrees and says I'm running into every wall in the place. And I've managed to fit this stuff in here and we, I can still park the car in here. Um, you know, you just have to be good at Tetris. So if you guys have questions, let us know. Hopefully this was uh, helpful for you guys. Uh, like I said, you know, bands and the uh, suspension type stuff, and you can probably hit every body part that you need to. The other thing that's extremely valuable, um, I don't know if you saw over here, is the white legs, because you can use these not only for your like your squats, your split squats and things like that to be able to push things more quad dominant. You can use them as ramps if you want to make a bench. We used it to ramp up a seat for a leg extension or whatever, but having a sturdy ramp thing that you can use uh, is going to be really valuable too. It allows us to use just simple wood planks to essentially uh, mimic some machines. So hopefully that helps. Good luck, guys.